In this video, I'm checking out the Nisi 15mm f4 for full-frame Sony mirrorless cameras. Now, they were generous enough to send me this lens for review, but as always, this review is independent and all of these opinions are my very own. So let's jump into it. This is a full frame ultra wide angle lens that has the unique characteristic of creating sun stars at relatively fast apertures. It comes in this gray box. Inside you don't get much, a couple of lens caps and some reading materials. It does have a nice metal lens hood that slides onto the front, but annoyingly doesn't click into place and so it never quite feels secure. Taking a look at the lens body, it is made of all metal and glass as far as I can tell. Very good build quality and it is fairly heavy for the size, coming in at 470 grams. The back features a metal lens mount, no electronic connections as this is a manual focus only lens. Moving forward, there is a Nisi logo, E-mount on the side, and this lens is made in China. Here near the back, there is a nice feeling aperture ring. It has distinct clicks, which is nice. It feels and sounds great, but I wish it had a little bit more resistance to the rotation. It turns rather freely and as a result can get easily bumped by accident. In front of that is a gray bar showing a focus distance scale and then the focus ring itself. The focus ring feels nice. It's a little bit light in my opinion, but it does rotate very smoothly rotates about 45 degrees in either direction, and as this is an ultra wide angle lens, focusing it manually is quite easy. At the very front of this lens is a convex front lens element, not too large, Nisi branding on the front. One of the nice things about this lens is that it has a 72 millimeter filter thread, so those who love using filters won't have to go out and buy new filters in most cases. This lens features 12 elements in 10 groups and a 10 straight bladed diaphragm. On my a7 see this lens looks great. It is compact for an ultra wide angle and the silver stripe almost perfectly matches the silver top of my camera body. The one problem is that putting the lens on and taking it off is a bit of a hassle because the aperture ring, focus ring, and the lens hood all rotate freely and too easily. You have less than a centimeter of space to grip at the very bottom of this lens to mount it to the camera or to remove it. So at least initially, this lens feels nice and well built, but the true test is its performance. Now, if you have an APS-C size censored camera, you really shouldn't even be looking at this lens because for about the same money or even less, you can get the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, which is an excellent lens, very sharp, going to be sharper than this. It's going to be f1.4 versus f4. It's going to have autofocus. It's going to have excellent colors. That is a much better option for APS-C shooters. Now, this lens really only makes sense if you have a full frame Sony mirrorless camera. So as that is the case, I will be testing it on my Sony a7C. So let's take a look at some sample photos. All of these are done with this camera straight out of the camera, no editing. Ready, set, go. So this lens is an interesting one. Wide open at f4, it is relatively sharp in the center of the frame. The corners really don't get sharp until you stop it down a few clicks. The Nisi has some vignetting wide open. There is a little bit of noticeable distortion, but flare control is pretty good. Using it was very easy as focusing took almost no time at all since it is a super wide angle and the rotation is just 45 degrees. Because it is a wide angle, you can get some dramatic shots with it. It's great for indoor work, although I wish it was a little bit brighter 
than f4. I'd say it wouldn't be a bad real estate photography lens either, but it is not stellar to the point of outperforming other options out there. The thing that makes this lens so unique is not that it is the sharpest or the best at distortion control or has the best colors. It is what it does with bright points of light. This lens has an unbelievable ability to create some pretty incredible sun stars, even wide open at f4. Now normally to get the sun star look, you have to stop down a lens to f16 or even f22, and you have to be shooting into the sun on a cloudless day. With this Nisi 15 millimeter, you can easily get sun stars at f4 on a cloudy day, and even from a set of car headlights. Basically any relatively bright light source will create the sun star look. And it is a cool look. This is the first time I've ever used a lens such as this one that produces sun stars at F4. In fact, it's the first time that I've ever tried to produce sun stars in general. Uh, but I have to say this is a niche lens. Undoubtedly, there are people out there that like the look of sun stars. And if that's the case, this lens makes a whole lot of sense. But it's hard to recommend, or if I was even shopping for myself for an ultra wide angle lens, it's hard to imagine justifying buying this lens if I didn't care about the sun stars, because again, there are sharper, better performing lenses, at least on a basic level out there that are also manual focus from companies such as Rokinon. But if you want an ultra wide angle lens, you want average to slightly above average performance optically, but you want the incredible sun stars that this lens produces, it kind of makes sense. Anyway, uh, that is going to be it for my review of the Nissi 15 millimeter lens. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something from it. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of sun stars in general. I'm curious how many of you think that those are cool or important or fancy, I don't know. Um, as always, thank you so much for all of your comments, all of your likes, and your support. Stay tuned for more, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.